16 facts for 16 days. A legal webcast powered by the Fight for Good Foundation and the SSCN. I'm Nicole Besick, and during this four-part series, I'll sit down with some of the country's most sought-after attorneys and legal experts who specialize in GBV litigation and the protection of women and children. Each episode has an overarching theme for talking how to obtain a restraining order, how to report a sexual assault. And together, these attorneys and I will unpack four facts that will take you from crime to legal relief that you can apply without a lawyer and without access to exuberant funds. These four episodes each part ways with four key legal facts for women experiencing GBV. Four facts times four episodes gives you 16, and thus we have our love letter to the women of South Africa. The 16 facts for 16 days. In today's episode, we're discussing four facts on how to get out, and these facts will take you from crime to legal relief without a lawyer and without access to exuberant funds. Welcome back. You're tuned into 16 facts for 16 days, and this is four facts on how to get out. Joining me in studio here at the beautiful Dreambox is Nyarazo Muzembe, a candidate attorney at Gunston Strandvik Attorneys with an impressive track record in civil litigation, commercial litigation and asset management. We had her in studio for episode one and we welcome her back on episode three. Nyarazo, thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank you for having me back, Nicole. Yay. So for those of us who may not be familiar with your work or those who are just tuning in and missed episode one, yeah. tell us why you are the perfect person to sit next to me and tell the women of South Africa four ways on how they can get out. Well, our Guns and Strandberg litigation team specializes in helping women get out of relationships mm -hmm. where they don't feel safe, where they want to leave a marriage or even a partnership. Yeah. So that's something that we deal with every single day and we've been dealing with these situations for 25 years. So with your firm boasting over 25 years of experience in GBV litigation, we are in very, very safe hands. So let's jump straight in. So often in South Africa, women who experience gender-based violence find themselves trapped. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've put this episode together for you. Mm -hmm. These are four ways in which you can get out and the situations or the, the strings that keep women tied into relationships. We're gonna try and help you cut those today. How do I get out of GBV scenarios where myself and my abuser share kids? So in a situation like that, you don't have a legal marriage. So I'm assuming that you're living, you were living with the biological father of your children right. and he's the perpetrator. In that situation, legally, you're not married. So you don't have a lot of the legal constraints to you know, separate yourself from this person. Mm -hmm. um, the protection order, which is what we spoke about in episode one, yes. that would obviously come in because you want some sort of protection. But the next thing that would come in is to protect your children. And what you would need is something that we refer to as a parenting plan. Mm -hmm. Sounds complicated, it really is simple. So what that is, is essentially where you sit down with the biological father of your children, and if you have a restraining order against that person, mm. you can even involve a third party. Right. And what you do is you set the terms of the contact, the care, the maintenance of the children. Contact, care, and maintenance. maintenance. It's basically your parental responsibilities and rights. Right, so this sounds like a very intricate document. It mm -hmm. sounds like something that's gonna cost me a lot of money. It sounds like something I might need a lawyer for. Is that true? Not necessarily. Okay. So you can actually follow a basic template that's available online, and you can actually see how to set it out. So once I found this form and I filled it out, yes. what then? Then what you can do is that you would need to have witnesses. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't have to be a lawyer, it can be your friend. They witness the document and you and the other biological parent signs this document. Once they've signed it, then you need to take it to a family advocate. Where do I find a family advocate? Again, this sounds really expensive. Yes, so it's not expensive at all. You don't mm -hmm. pay for it. This is someone that is employed by the state. Right. And you find them at a high court closest to you. Mm -hmm. And I found a family advocate. Yes. What now? What do I take to him? Now you're going to take the original parenting plan mm -hmm. and you're going to make a copy of it right. you're going to take those two documents to the family advocate the family advocate then endorses mm -hmm. so what I mean by that is the family advocate checks the parenting plan right. to make sure that they think that it is in the best uh, interest of the children right because that's what we're trying to do we're trying to protect the children mm -hmm. right so you they're going to check everything let's say for example if you've had um, documents to say the contact should be limited let's say because this person is a violent person then in that case the family advocate will see it is in the best interest of the children for the father to only have supervised visits for that's example true. that takes about two weeks for them okay. to endorse it so you submit it you leave it there then the family advocate will then 
you, they'll tell you to come back in two weeks and check if it's endorsed. It usually doesn't take longer than that. Okay. And then now you have a valid court document stating the contact, the care, and the maintenance of your children. So you are able to protect yourself and your kids. And that was hard to get out when the victim and the perpetrator share kids. Moving on to number two. How does the victim get out when she and the perpetrator are married in community of property? So if you're married in community of property, you obviously have a valid marriage certificate. Mm -hmm. So there's a bit of legal hurdles that you need to kind of get through in order right. to dissolve that marriage. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would say is that you need to fill out what's called a Form 2C. Now, you can get this at the high court or the regional court that's closest to you. Mm -hmm. You'd walk into the court, the security, you tell them, I want to file for divorce. Right. And they would lead you to the clerks that can assist you. And what they do is they give you this form, it's called a Form 2C, and it's very simple, but again, they can guide you through it if, if you, you, know, you don't understand some of the terms right. that are there. With this form, mm. do I need any supporting documents that yes, I need to take along do. with me? Very important. Mm -hmm. You need a copy of your marriage certificate, so actually a certified copy, a uh, certified copy of your ID. If you have the certified ID of your partner, your ex-partner, you should add it. But mm -hmm. if you don't, you can only, it's fine. Not you a can, problem. Yeah, just put your. So the certified copy of the marriage certificate, the certified IDs mm -hmm. of mine and possibly his. Yes. Anything else? So actually there is one thing that you can add. If you and the other party, so even though there was, there was this act of violence that happened between the two of you, mm -hmm. if there's certain things that you are agreeing to, so this is called a consent paper. It's very basic. It's not any prescribed form. Mm -hmm. If there's certain things that you want to agree on, let's say for example, you want to say, um, you keep the car, you keep the house. So yes. it's things that we don't want to fight about in court. You put them in that what's called a consent paper. But again, the clerk can really guide you and assist you with that. You don't need a lawyer in order to be able to draft something like that. Perfect. So we're going to attach those certified documents to our 2C. And that was how to get out when you're in community of property. Mm -hmm. Moving on to number three. How does the victim get away from her perpetrator when they are married out of community of property? What are the differences? So it's actually the exact same process as okay. when you're married in community of property. There's only one difference and that you're going to attach a consent paper if you have one, your marriage certificate, the uh, copies of the IDs, but also the anti-nuptial contract. Uh, I remember. So it's the marriage certificate, the mm. IDs, the consent forms if mm. needed or the consent papers if mm. needed. And then we're just going to attach our anti-nuptial exactly. contract to that and we're done. Same yes, process. Same form, the 2C. Amazing. Moving on to number four. What happens when the victim and her perpetrator share assets? You see, Nicole, when assets are involved, it does become a bit more tricky mm -hmm. because we don't have a prescribed form. So it's up to the parties how they're willing to negotiate and come to an agreement in terms of how to dissolve their assets. And in cases of gender-based violence, there usually is a lot of tension involved. Mm. And now also money is being involved. Mm. So this is one of those instances that I imagine a woman really is kept and reinforced into that abusive mm. partnership and abusive mm. space mm. because you can go, cool, I'm not selling the house. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, mm. what then? So in that situation, then let's say your partner what doesn't want to sell the house, but you want the income, you want to sell the house. So that you can get away, that you exactly. can leave you nothing to do with it. Yes. Yeah. In that situation, then that partner must buy you out. So you can actually, they must give you an offer to purchase your share of the house. Mm -hmm. So you can have someone evaluate the property, say how much it's worth, and then your share, they need to buy you out. And how do we enforce that? So that you can involve a lawyer. You can also involve a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. Might not be as expensive as a lawyer. Yes. Or you can say to the person, I want to sell my share. You have a right to that. As a person whose name the property is in, you can enforce that. You can say, I want to sell my share. Because oh, remember, wow. you can also sell it to someone else. You could right. sell your share to a third party. And now we're sharing that house with somebody exactly. else. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Those were four facts on how to get out here on 16 Facts for 16 Days. Thank you so much, candidate attorney, for joining me today and also for everything you're doing in the war against GBV. If you felt empowered and protected by this episode or know of somebody who might be, go ahead and share it to your social media platforms. All materials are available for free download. In our final episode, we unpack the four facts on how to report sexual harassment in the workplace. Until then, I'm Nicole Besick, and this is the 16 Facts for 16 Days, powered by the Fight for Good Foundation and the SSCN.